Okay, there are a number of uh, rulings applicable to custody. Among them is the, that the mother's relatives always have stronger claim to uh, it than the father's relatives. And we said that this is what the majority of schools of thought say, yet this is not the most authentic. The most authentic is, which Ibn Taymiyyah says, that the closest to the child is more worthy of it. So a father and a mother, by default, the hadith says, the custody is for the mother. A father and a grandmother, the mother is not there anymore, or she's not qualified. So the judge's choices are the father and the mother's mother, the grandmother. The majority of scholars say the mother of the mother takes it. But Ibn Taymiyyah says, no, there is no evidence from the Quran or Sunnah saying this. So we give it to the father because the father is closer in the absence of the mother. So all what you see here, such as um, the child's mother, but when there is a factor that prevents her taking custody, such as failing to meet its conditions, then the child's custody transferred to her mother, that is the grandmother, then her grandmother, then the child's father's mother, then the child's full sister. So they're insisting on giving it to females all the way from the mother's side, if not then from the father's side, etc. But this is not the most authentic opinion. Uh, the most authentic is the closest of them. So if we have a maternal aunt and a paternal uncle, definitely the maternal aunt, a full sister or half a sister, the full sister gets it because she's closer. She's a sister from the father and the mother. And likewise, if a brother a full brother from the father and the mother and half a sister only from the father's side definitely she goes or the child goes to the full brother and not to the sister who's half sister and this is the most authentic opinion so it is the father's responsibility for payment of the child's custody so okay the mother took her child the divorce took place, they fought over custody, the mother of a child was awarded with the custody. Is that it? No. The father of the child is responsible for his clothing, for his feeding, for getting him a place to live in with his mother and siblings if he has siblings. So he's responsible for payment, financial payment for his children and unfortunately I get thousands of complaints of children stating that after my father divorced my mom he left us for like 20 years never contacted us never sent us a penny never cared about us and these type of fathers would be held accountable on the day of judgment if Allah willed that they should suffer in this life, then this is a mercy from Allah. That Allah is making their torment and punishment here in this dunya. But if they are living a good life, an easy life, everything is being facilitated for them, then let it be known that in their graves after the death and on the day of judgment, they will suffer immensely for this grave and serious sin that they neglected their children in such a fashion. So how long should the custody be? What's the duration of it? Well, scholars say that when the child no longer needs the assistance and the care of his guardian, this is when 
the custody is over. So if a child is self-sufficient, he's grown up, he's become an adult, then there's no need for custody anymore. And some scholars say that this is when a boy reaches seven years of age and a girl reaches nine years of age. And they have different evidences backing this up. Some make it a little bit more, some make it a little bit less. And the uh, uh, other views are when the child reaches a level of understanding and ability to choose. He's given the right to choose. So the judge brings his father and mother and addresses the child. Who will you choose from them? And whoever he chooses, he's awarded custody. And if the child changes his mind three months later, then he is awarded custody to the other spouse or the other parent. Because what determines the custody now is the choice of the child. And he can change as many times as he wishes. This is where he finds his heart and tranquility. So the, uh, the judge immediately awards the custody to the one that the child had chosen. And this was backed by a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ told a child once, this is your father and this is your mother. Take either one's hands and the child took his mother's hand. Now, this issue of giving the choice to the child is an issue of judgment by the judge. Because at the end of the day, what we want is the benefit of the child. So if the mom and dad are both righteous practicing Muslims, would care for their child immensely, whatever the child chooses, we give the custody to that parent that the child chose. But if the child chose and explained to the judge, he says, I'd like to go with my father. Because my mother always nags me and tells me to study and to offer my prayer and to sleep early while my father lets me play with the kids down the hood and he never tells me to pray and he makes me eat sweets and whatever I want. Immediately the judge would say, well, you are given to your mother because she knows what's good for you and definitely your father does not know what is good for you. So what counts is al-maslaha, the benefit of the child. This is what counts most and this is what the judge would usually take care of and be sure that it is sought after and implemented for the benefit of the boy or the girl.